Hello guys, uh, in this brief lecture, I'm going to go over uh, one of the last items in our uh, in our items that we are covering, and uh, this is the bushing. And the bushing is a form of a bearing type, uh, which is sometimes called a plain bearing or a solid bearing. Uh, people usually use bushings in applications where your application requires um, uh, high reliability. Essentially, you don't want to have a chance, for example, in a bearing failing, and it is uh, usually a low cost compared to a traditional metal bearing with rolling elements. So the bushing would look like this, uh, and that bushing basically can do bearing support on either the inner side or, or the outer side. And this uh, system here, basically the bushing is installed in a pillow structure, and it allows you to, for example, do radial support and even also a thrust support on this end, as you would see. Uh, usually, uh, bushings are made out of uh, plastic materials such as nylon, uh, Teflon, and sometimes out of metal such as brass. And uh, most of these materials, basically, they uh, exhibit a very low coefficient of friction, uh, meaning that the surfaces of the shaft inside the bushing or the housing on the outside of the bushing can have very low coefficient of friction that is comparable to a traditional uh, boiler bearing. And um, some of the applications that you would find bushings are, you know, gantry systems or compact uh, 3D printers, for example, uh, they would typically have bushings and then they would look like that. Some of them are actually, they have lining on the inside and then the lining is sometimes used to reduce friction by reducing the contact surface that you have. On, on the bushing. Um, again, uh, this guy here is acting as a bushing, right? This whole plastic, right? Or 3D printed plastic is basically can telescope in and out of these two shafts. And therefore, basically the plastic here is acting as a bushing. All right, so bush, bushing basically means you have, you know, a, a you know a sort of, you know, like transition fit between usually steel and, you know, plastic material or brass or nylon on the other end. And um, most of the time, the material that makes up the bushing is designed in a way to be self-lubricating. So with time, basically, as the bushing actually wears out, it generates, a, it self-lubricates, essentially, uh, maintaining a low coefficient of friction between the rolling element and the bushing itself. Uh, bushings, in addition to them being able to do radial support, like in this case, right, it actually also supports the thrust loads, right, such as in this case. So by putting, by basically, uh, you know, obviously you, you know, by putting a bushing, first of all, you have to have a hole uh, that is designed for the outer diameter of the bushing, and uh, you would look on uh, the manufacturer requirements for the tolerances on the outer diameter of the bushing, and then you would basically press fit, for example, the bushing on the outside, and uh, you here want to make sure that sometimes if you actually, um, if your outer diameter in your, in your metal, right, is, is smaller than what the manufacturer of the bushing basically recommends, when you basically press the bushing over here, you will actually reduce your, the inner diameter of the bushing, and that will actually create a lot of friction on this shaft. So before you actually put a hole for the outer, part of the bushing, you wanna revise the manufacturer tolerances on what they recommend and then do it based on that to make sure that your inner shaft can actually slide freely, um, you know, depending on the application, whether it is, you know, telescoping function or oscillatory function or, or circular motion. So one of the main things that uh, we are going to be dealing with in terms of bushing, we are going to analyze the wear on the bushing. And, um, and to, and what will actually happen is that uh, the wear of the bushing is going to be proportional to the work done on the bushing, right? So the more the work that has been done on the bushing, then the more wear that is going to be developed on the bushing. And therefore, you are going to have, you know, more material removed from the bushing. So we can basically start by a simple object. If you have a, a simple uh, object that is subject to uh, a force F on top, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, this is asperity contact, and in asperity contact, basically the friction is independent of the velocity. The friction is primarily a function of the coefficient of friction and the pressure at the interface. So the work done by the frictional force on this element as you move this object you know, to the left or to the right, 
it's going to be primarily you know the friction times the displacement f times x right and i know the friction force is going to be uh mu f times uh, the the perpendicular force so mu f times f is is the actual friction force and then s is going to be the displacement um, and I know the force at the interface is going to be proportional to, uh, it can also be related to the pressure at the interface and the area of the interface. So uh, the total work of friction is going to be the coefficient of friction multiplied by the pressure, multiplied by the area interface, multiplied by the displacement that was done. And I can further relate that to time by basically linking in the velocity. So the total work done by a friction force is going to be mu f times p times a, which is a force, or the you know the perpendicular force applied, multiplied by the velocity and time. All right, so that is uh, pretty basic. And now what we uh, uh, know is where basically have to be proportional to uh, the work. And if we write W, right, and if we represent where by the volume of the material that is taking of the bushing. So where is basically the volume, and the volume can be uh, made as a product of the thickness of the wear, basically how much wear has been done on the material multiplied by the area. So wear thickness times the wear area is going to be WA, and that is going to be proportional to what I just, what I just mentioned earlier. This is the work of uh, the object that has been done, right so this guy here is the work of the friction and then this is the wear volume uh, so here basically we can do some experiments right and then we can get this uh, constant k factor so you know if you can do experiments on different uh, you know bushing materials right and you essentially you know the work that has been done you control the pressure at the interface you know your geometry the area and you know the velocity that you know you are applying on this part and then the time you can ultimately go and you can measure how much wear you have developed and you can get that k basically by experiment and uh, ultimately we can actually write that the wear is equal to uh, here, the wear basically is going to be the depths, right? So because we are removing the area on both ends. So the wear as depths, right, is going to be equal to K, right, which is an experimental factor multiplied by the pressure at the interface, multiplied by the velocity, multiplied by time. Uh, so here is what. So it turned out that actually this experimental value can actually be uh, segmented into three other factors. So we are going to set divide k into f1, f2, and then another k, basically, which is a subpart of these uh, coefficients that we are using. And we are going to be using lookup tables, basically, for these guys. So f1, so the wear, again, here, it's in depths, right? Like, you know, uh, inches or millimeters, and that will depend on the factors that we're using. So f1 is going to depend on the motion type that you have. It will also depend on the load and the speed as well. And F2 will depend on the temperature and then cleanliness. So cleanliness here basically means, is that bushing basically open to the environment? If the bushing is open to the environment, it means that dust is going to penetrate uh, and it's gonna sit, for example, on the shaft where the bushing is moving back and forth. And the fact that you have dust, basically you are also going to increase the wear uh, with time. So we basically, how are we going to get F1, F2, and then K? We are going to use lookup tables. So K, you are going to get from a wear factor, which I'm going, to, what I'm going to show you in a second. And F1 and F2 are based on motion type and then temperature. So let us, first of all, look at uh, F1. So this is table 1210 in my lecture notes. And you can use this one to calculate F1. So if the, mo if the motion is rotary, basically rotational bushing, right? Uh, essentially, first of all, you want to look at the characteristic pressure. If the pressure is between 720 or less PSI, then basically you will use your, uh, these are based on and the velocity, basically. If the velocity is below 3 or below 3.3 feet per minute, then F1 is going to be 1. If the velocity ranges between 3.3 feet per minute to 33 feet per minute, you're going to use these values and so on and so forth. All right, again, if the pressure has increased, you are going to have this, uh, this range. For example, if the pressure is larger than 720 PSI up to 3600 
and then you have these values for the velocity. So you have different brackets of, for the velocity and those different brackets will give you different F1 factors. In the case of a movement that is oscillatory, basically the shaft is rotating by 30 degrees and then coming back. So if it's rotating actually more than 30 degrees and the pressure is 720 or less, you're gonna use this. If it is less than 30 degree and for that pressure, you have that, right? And then if you have pressure that is 720 up to 3600, you are going to use this. So basically this is like a lookup table. First of all, you have to identify the type of the motion. So here rotary, basically it's continuously you know, continuously rotating in that direction. Oscillatory meaning that you are going to 30 degree and then coming back, right? And then you see that F1 increases for this angle, right? And why is that? Why do you think, for example, that the wear will basically increase as your angle decrease? If your angle decrease, basically you are applying the same movement of, over the same region of the bushing. And if you are doing that, basically, that region of the bushing basically is going to be having more wear. Remember, F1 increases, basically, it means that W, which is the total wear depth, is going to increase. Uh, reciprocating, uh, basically, it means here you are going, um, you know, you are essentially uh, reciprocating back and forth, like going longitudinally along the bushing. And here, again, for these pressures and then these velocities, and then this is going to be your F1. And by the way, the velocity is the pitch line velocity, basically the velocity at the interface. All right, sometimes if you have an inner shaft rotating in the opposite direction, then you also have to add more velocity because your, your inner shaft would be rotating as an opposite direction of the, as a bushing, right? So you have higher relative velocities. So now let's look at the other factor, which was F2. So F2, like I said, mainly depends on the temperature and then foreign matter, right? If temperature is, you know, 140 or lower, foreign matter means is a bushing open to dust, right? And in the case of a 3D printer, for example, if the whole printer is enclosed, then, you know, foreign matter, maybe you can say no, right? But if the bushing is basically, you know, wide open to uh, the environment, basically, and contaminate, dust contamination, basically, then these are going to be the value for F2. Okay, so now we have F1 and F2. The last thing is gonna be the wear factor K, and then that basically depends on the type of the material. Oils 800 is one of the most common material for bushings. And uh, actually, uh, 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 the major company that actually manufacture bushings is called IGUS. IGUS, you know, written I-G-U-S. It is the leading manufacturers of, uh, 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 of bushings. And, uh, um, you know, solid bearings, and uh, they use basically these oils, and this is a very common material that is that is used. And the reason why that material, which is basically plastic, is called oils, because that particular bushing type is actually is self-lubricated. So while it wears, basically, it generates lubrication, maintaining a low coefficient of friction. And this is the wear factor on this one. Um, so, uh, you know, this is not in any order, obviously. So here three, this guy decreases, this guy increases. So here you would simply look up the wear factor. And there is a value here that actually limits what you have on, on individual bushing, which is a product of the pressure multiplied by the velocity, right? So here you are talking about the average pressure on the interface multiplied by that pitch line velocity. And then as you can see here, PV is, the, these values are in PSI multiplied by feet per minute. So all the time when you are dealing with bushings, the interface velocity have to be in feet per minute. All right, so uh, let us look in a little bit more detail in the case of a bushing. And uh, this is in the case of a radial bushing. The force applied on the bushing, the radial force is F, and the pressure basically will vary around it, right? So the average pressure is F, right? The force divided by D, diameter multiplied by L, where L is the depth of that bushing. And this is basically like the bearing stress that we have been dealing with. In reality, the stress actually, or the pressure distribution on the bushing would actually look like that. And we can mathematically represent that as a cosine function, and then we can write that the pressure is equal to maximum pressure multiplied by cosine theta, where the maximum pressure basically occurs on the inside. And see how theta basically will vary from pi over two to minus pi over two. So here, that pressure, we also have to multiply it by cosine theta one more time to project that on the vertical direction. So this is our uh, individual pressure uh, at every element, P max cosine theta, and the force, just like what I did earlier with your uh, uh, with the clutch plate, 
uh, by getting the friction on the clutch plate, right? Uh, the pressure or the force, I'm sorry, is equal to the integration of the pressure multiplied by the uh, by DA, uh, where DA is here an element area along the bushing, right? So DA in this case is going to be R R d theta, which is d over two times d theta multiplied by L, which is the length. So DA basically is giving you a whole strip down along the bushing along its length. So all that you do here basically it's you know simple integration from minus pi over two to pi over two, whatever we had value for the pressure multiplied by cosine theta multiplied by dA. You go and then you integrate this from minus from minus pi over two to pi over two, and that will basically relate the force that you get to the pressure, to the maximum pressure on the bushing, right? So if I have you know like you know 10 pound of radial force, I know that this is going to be my maximum pressure, and this is the relationship right here. So that is going to be the relationship that would relate the maximum pressure that gets developed at the bottom, you know, at the at the you know uh, bottom, uh, right below the force, right, on a circular bushing, and then that is your your force D, and then L are the diameter of uh, the the shaft, and then L is the length of the shaft or the, the bushing here. If it is uh, the length of the bushing in this case, obviously. But the diameter of the shaft would be basically equal to the diameter of the bushing in this case. Okay, uh, very good. So if we, uh, so now that we have uh, the, you know, the force and then we have this related to the pressure, um, we can now basically obtain the velocity that we had earlier, right, in our equation. This is what we had before. Uh, so this is the weight equation that we had for a, you know, block that was translating, right? And then uh, here, when you say wear and then you are putting P max, basically you are calculating the wear right below the maximum pressure, right? So, uh, uh, you know, at, at other types, basically, so I'm gonna redraw this one more time. So this is your shaft, right? And um, let's see if I can draw that. So uh, this is your pressure distribution. Okay, so that is our pressure distribution. And then here, what we are calculating, we are calculating the wear right here, right? Uh, along, you know, that, that wear, right there. Right, so how much wearing basically we are developing on the bushing. Okay, kind of this value right there, right? Right below, um, uh, right below the, the radial, uh, the force essentially. Okay, so, <clears throat> So this is our wear, right? And I'm going to replace my maximum pressure by this value, right? Which I just calculated uh, relating the maximum pressure with the force. So I'm going to plug that here. And then I can also relate uh, the pitch line velocity V with my, uh, uh, with my rotational velocity of the shaft. So if the shaft is rotating and, in, in, you know, if N is given to you in RPM, if you multiply pi d times RPM over 12, you are going to get, uh, the velocity or the you know the pitch line velocity of your shaft in feet per minute right so here n is going to be in rpm d is going to be in inches right that is why you're dividing this by 12 so pi times d times n over 12 is going to give you your velocity in feet per minute so you're going to basically plug that here and then t obviously won't change and uh, this is going to be your wear function or your you know the depths of wear on a bushing right right below the force okay okay so uh, this is really the theory of uh, of bushings and um, now let us actually do an example on that uh, so we have this following bushing and uh, it's made out of um, oils sp500 alloy brass bushing so um, so that is the bushing right there and um, for this bushing, basically, uh, we have, uh, you know, these limitations and then these limitations basically come from the manufacturer. And for example, the maximum temperature can be 300. The product of the average pressure here, P times V guys is not the maximum pressure. This is the average pressure multiplied by your uh, pitch line velocity and the pitch line velocity is usually constant, it won't change. Uh, other, you know, if you're unsure, obviously you can always take the, the worst case situation here and then to make sure that the product of the pressure times the velocity has to be below a particular value. And also the, the pitch line velocity or the interface velocity has to be a, below a particular value, in this case 100. And the maximum pressure over here is 3560. Uh, so there are other properties such as tensile trends. Basically here you're looking at the stress that gets developed 
basically essentially the bearing stress, right? The elongation, how much you can basically pull on that. And then these are stuff that uh, we don't really need in our case. So what you should be concerned with is only these characteristics from here to here. These guys, the service range. Okay, uh, so now uh, let us actually look at this example here where we have this uh, bushing and uh, the bushing is operating in a clean environment, meaning that you have no foreign matter at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. The allowable wear without loss of function is five thousandths of an inch, right? So 0 0.005. The peripheral velocity, so which is a pitch line velocity, is seriously feet per minute. So, you know, this is great. It's given to you directly in feet per minute. Now we need to find the number of revolutions for the radial wear to reach 0 0.05. And then this is a maximum wear, right? Again, maximum wear below the post. So what do we have to do? So all you have to do here basically is just write the equation, right? And uh, we can essentially find uh, the time, right, in hours. And uh, based on this velocity, we can convert this guy to RPM. And uh, we can calculate the time. And then we divide uh, the time by the velocity. And then we can get the number of revolutions, right? So, um, so this is our wear function, right? It's given to you that like that. And then, uh, you know, earlier we had 4F pi DL. And then we had the velocity described in terms of N. Mahege uh, that was here, right? Uh, we had N. So in, in this case, we don't actually need to do this. We can just keep V as it is because it's already given to me, right? I don't need to convert it to, uh, to uh, RPM, right? So this is why we kept it like that and then we are solving for T. We need to obviously look up F1, F2, and then K. Uh, so uh, first of all, we have to verify the service range of this bushing. We can calculate the maximum pressure based on this equation for F by D over L uh, that we you know, integrated earlier. And then if you do that, basically you get 891 PSI, which is below 0560, so this is fine. And now you wanna get the average pressure, F divided by DL, which is basically your bearing stress. And then your pitch line velocity is given to you directly, which is below 100, so we're fine. The product of P times V is okay. So this value is below 46,700, which is you know, from this table. Uh, right, so this is also good. So now we are okay to move forward in calculating F1 and F2 and then K. Obviously, the also temperature is below 300 Fahrenheit. So uh, in our case, it's a rotary motion and the pressure is below uh, 720 PSI. So I'm going to go back to 1210. So this is 1210. Uh, basically, uh, based on our uh, uh, velocity, right uh, our factor right so we are the pressure is below 720 and uh, the velocity basically uh, is 33 feet per minute so for uh, 33 feet per minute basically uh, what do we have here uh, it is 1.3 so 33 feet per minute um, okay so yeah right at, at the top so 33 feet per minute basically your f1 is going to be 1.3 and obviously, guys, this is a range, right? So 1 to 1.3, if you were anywhere on the inside, you can interpolate, right? And then we've done interpolation in our course. Um, okay, on the exam, I won't give you guys, you know, to interpolate, you can just choose any value in, in the middle and that won't be an issue, right? Um, but you can always interpolate linearly and then you can quickly get your F1. Now, let us look at F2. Uh, temperature was 70 and then we had no foreign matter. So F2, I believe, should be one in this case. Um, yes, indeed, F2 is one, and then K, we had based on OS 500, uh, K is 0 0.6 times 10 to the minus 10. So pay attention to the units here. Um, this is in inches and then feet per hour, meaning, meaning the time would be in hours. So when you calculate the time based on the equation that we had earlier, uh, your time would be in hours, right? And then the question was, we need to find the number of cycles so we can, we need to find N. And we need to find N based on the equation that what I provided earlier, how we can calculate uh, uh, the angular velocity based on the surface velocity or vice versa. So here you, you multiply by 12 and then you divide by pi D. So now we get our revolution RPM. Now all you have to do is basically to get the number of cycles uh, for this amount of time, basically we multiply. So, you know, position is equal to velocity times time, right? So it is velocity times time here, revolution per minute. 
right? And uh, so we have two, uh, 126 revolution per minute. So every hour you are going to be doing 126 times 60, right? And by this number of hours, you are going to get that many number of cycles. So 16.5 times six revolutions. Okay, guys. So uh, that is it regarding bushings. And this really uh, kind of summarizes uh, all that we had to do in terms of, you know, friction analysis, you know, bushings, and also clutches, and then uh, brakes. Uh, I'm going to be posting one last lecture in which I'm going to go over self-locking brakes which is a very interesting concept uh, that is useful in many applications and i'm actually going to cover a little bit on gears uh, but gears are not going to be included on your final so i'm just going to do a lecture on gears for you guys to be familiar with and uh, we also had journal bearings so i mentioned you know we are not going to be covering journal bearings as journal bearings actually wasn't covered before and they are not on the syllabus as requirements um, but what I'll do is uh, at some point, I'm just gonna post one lecture that quickly kind of go over, you know, what journal bearings are and then how they are used. And this is for your own information. You don't have to be responsible for it. Okay, guys, uh, thank you.